Okay, we're getting ready to tie our hoops on our uh, net, and I'm gonna mark my hooks up. This is a brand new set, so I use a black Sharpie, it's fine. Um, I went ahead and put my first mark on here, and I just did a double line. That way I keep all these hooks in line. Um, they're all brand new, but I still like to keep them all in line like they come. What I did, I went ahead and calculated. I'll tell you real quick again, it's 42 inch hooks. That's the outer hook, it's 42 inches. That's what we go by. Um, so to figure the circumference, it's pi times the diameter, which is 42. So it'd be 42 times 3.14 come out to 131.7 or eight or something. So I just round that to 132. And I take 132, which is the circumference around, and divide that by my number of mesh, which is 40. So that uh, 132 divided by 40 ended up being 3.3 exactly. So roughly three inches and a third, or about three eighths is close enough on a tape. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna mark from here all the way around three and uh, roughly a third. Should end up with around 40 marks. Once I get those marks, I'll come back and lay my, I've got this in a, just for a center reference, I'll just lay a straight edge. I'm just using my netting needle and I'll come in here and mark my hooks and that's gonna be my tie points all the way around. All right, y'all can see right here how we got them marked. I done pulled one of the hooks out, so there's only six left here. I've got one tied onto the net. But y'all can see how we've got them marked all the way around. I double counted, kind of made a mistake here, so I had to space it back out. I was one short, had to space it back out. But I've got it all right. Um, got, got good marks on all the hooks. Um, so we're gonna get started sewing these onto the net. All right, you see once again, um, this is the very tail end of the net. We're six and a half mesh to our first hook, or, or the tail end hook. We just start at the tail end and it's easier to go that way. Like I said, I always take me, I showed y'all in, in one of the other videos, I always take me a few strings and tie on that line of knots. So the hooks hang in there and it's, it's just a whole lot easier for me to work it like that. Um, I'll go back over the knots that we tie with this. I'm not gonna show the whole process because we've done a pretty good video on this already. But I will show, uh, again, these were about three and a third inch all the way around, 40 mesh, 40 lines on the hook. Do a double hitch like this, and you can see right there I put one of those lines on each side of that knot. So I'll show you real quick, kind of slow, how we tie these hitches. I'm gonna go underneath, catch my loop right here, this knot, then I'm taking my needle and going through this loop this way. And what that's gonna do when I pull that tight, um, going that way, I'm gonna pull that knot over past my line there and I'm gonna cinch that hitch down just on one side of my mark right there. And then I can kind of pull that, that line I actually pull back over there on its own. But I pull that hitch down tight now, and this is stretched pretty tight right here. I just stick my thumb on there, hold that one, come back through here again, and through that loop one more time for another hitch. Now the way I'm tying those hitches and cinching that down I want my knot on the inside of the hook and my tie-in. This is the number 30. This is number 18 twine again. This is number 30. It's bigger because you get a lot of wear on these when it's rolling around on the bottom. Once I pull those down tight, you can see this line, the, the way I'm tying this, this line hugs this hook. So my hitch comes out on the bottom on both of these, the way I'm doing it. All right, I'm gonna speed up a little bit, get this thing tied on in the hooks where we can get it dipped in the water. 
one other tip I'll give you guys right here is, you know, these hooks are brand new fiberglass hooks. And they got little fiberglass splinters on them. So you want to be careful not to get those fiberglass splinters in your hands. Um, and although I've got my hands working around this, I definitely am leaving the palm of my hand on it. I don't want it nowhere on my skin. I probably better wash my hands good when I get done fooling with this fiberglass hook because you can actually you can't see it in the film but i can see little splinters coming off of these fiberglass hooks until you get some dip on them that kind of holds that stuff down you want to be careful with that fiberglass all right we about got a couple more knots here to tie we'll have this last hook tied in the front one and uh, that'll be all seven of them we'll get started tying the flues in after this but it's coming along pretty good, just taking me a couple afternoons working on it in between work and everything else that's going on. Just about wrap this up, tying it in the hooks. Be glad to have that part done. We've got one more to repair. We've got our other new one I haven't dipped yet, so We'll have two brand new ones to dip, and uh, one more to repair. So we'll have three nets to dip at one time, and these three will be ready to put in the water. That dip's gonna soak into all that, and uh, kind of stick it to that hook right there anyways. So that's not gonna move. Tie me one more overhand knot right there. Just kind of push that knot up close against it. See it? It's tied in the hooks. We are tying out the fingers in this second flue, the catch throat on this net. Um, looking pretty good so far. Making this one a little bit longer to see what the difference is on our catch, if any. Uh, we went over a lot of this tying these fingers out and stuff in some of the other videos. I'm not going to go over too much of it in this one. Just going to kind of update y'all, show you the progress of this net as we go here. So far it's looking pretty good right now. Just trying to get all of our tensions right on uh, all of these fingers. On that last net we uh, made sure this one you can see right here we put some boxes under here on the ends. Want to make sure this one's level the throat was a little off level. That's going to be pretty important when you're tying out these to make sure that the net's sitting level, either on the ground and our tie point over there on our fireplace and in the kitchen was a little higher so it, it made this throat uh, come up on the other net just a little bit. So I made sure this net's level before I'm tying this out and hopefully we won't have that problem this time. Correct. That's our catch throat right there. Looks pretty good. Be excited to get this one tied in and see what it all looks like finished. Really? Hey, I'm trying to work here. I can't even see the net. Hey. You gotta move. You gotta move. You gotta move. Hey.
getting this front throat fixed, tying it in. All right, one on our last finger here. Put three or four hitches on each side. That's gonna be it right there. I'm gonna tighten up all these knots, it all looks good. Tighten them up, burn them off a little shorter. You've been in the gym, it'll be a little bit easier. You wanted to be tough. <laughs> All right, we got our tension right on this net. We're tying in our tail end back here. I'll show y'all something right here. Look at that. Bradley Smith, that's a name tag. I'm gonna tie that name tag into the tail end of this net and cover it up as a means of identification if somebody steals my net and I find it. Out of sight and out of mind. If it come down to it, and I had to prove it was my net, that'd be a way right there that we could prove, you know, I could tell the game wardens or the law enforcement or whoever, hey, that's that's my net, and I'm fixing to prove it to y'all. You know, that they stole my net, and that'd be my way of proving it right there. I can promise you, if I find somebody stealing one of my nets, I'm going to press charges on them. Had them stole before. Ain't nothing worse than a thief. And uh, just something y'all can do to kind of protect yourself a little bit. Protect your investments. We got our new nets to dip, so I had the dip mixed up. I said we well, may as well go ahead and do these wire nets too while we're at it. I got three wire nets I'm gonna dip. Wait when we get ready to fish them. They'll be in pretty good shape. You need to dip these things every once in a while. It helps keep that wire from rusting and uh, just breaking down on you. We're about to change the color of this one right here.
All right, we got one fixed. We had some holes in um, from fishing the river a couple months ago. We got the two new ones dipped, hung up. Hopefully they'll be ready in about a week. We'll see how the weather goes. It's the first week of April, so around the 20th of April is when we really start running good in the lake. So we're gonna be about right on these two nets, getting them in. These are some real fine nets. Should catch a lot of flatheads in these. So pretty excited about that. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you hadn't. Like and share our videos, that always helps. Appreciate the comments. God's country hunting and fishing. Keeping it real.